Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to independent or dependent. That is the question. Calculating the probability of independent and dependent events, Chapter 4. Two or more events are independent events if the occurrence or non-occurrence of one of the events does not affect the occurrence or non-occurrence of the other events. Examples of independent events? Flipping a coin. Rolling a single die. Being left-handed and owning a dog eating popcorn, and singing Broadway show tunes. Two or more events are dependent events if the occurrence or non-occurrence of one of the events does affect the occurrence or non-occurrence of the other event. Examples of dependent events? Attending college and graduating from high school. Drawing two cards from a deck without replacement. Picking students for teams in dodgeball. First, let's look at dependent events. Think about drawing cards from an ordinary deck of 52. I want to know the probability that if I select three cards from a deck and don't put them back after each draw, what's the probability that I get three aces in a row? The first time I draw a card, I have all four aces and 52 cards from which to select. This makes the probability that I get an ace 4 out of 52. Now I draw another card. This time, there are only 51 cards in the deck and only three aces left. This means the chance of success is 3 out of 51. Now I draw my third card. How many aces are left? 2. How many cards do I have to select from? 50. So the probability that I draw a third ace is 2 out of 50. Applying the multiplication rule, I end up with the probability of getting 3 aces in a row without replacement is 0.0181% not something I would bet on. What about independent events? I'm going to conduct the same experiment, but this time I'm going to replace each card after I draw. These are independent events because I have the entire deck from which to select since I put the card back. What happened doesn't influence what happens the next time. I draw a card and the chance that I get an ace is 4 out of 52. I put it back into the deck and draw again. Well, all of the cards, including all four aces, are there again, aren't they? So I have the same probability of drawing an ace this time, or 4 out of 52. Now I draw card number 3. What's the probability that I draw that third ace? You guessed it, 4 out of 52. Just like with the dependent events, remember to apply the multiplication rule. I end up with a probability of getting three aces in a row, replacing the card after each draw as 0.0114%. These odds are a little better than before, but still not something I would bet my paycheck on. Remember, in dependent events, the sample size decreases, but in independent events, the sample size remains unchanged. Now, let's work an example problem having to do with defective parts in a box. A box contains 15 parts, three of which are defective. Part A asks, if you randomly select two parts from the box without replacement, what is the probability that both parts are defective? This is without replacement, so it is dependent probability. Immediately, you should recognize that two things are going to happen. First, the sample space will decrease with each event, and the likelihood of success will also decrease. The probability that the first one is defective is 3 out of 15. The probability for the second one being defective is 2 out of 14. Applying the multiplication rule, the result is that there is a 6 out of 240 probability that by selecting 2 out of the 15 possible parts, both will be defective. What about part B? The question asks, if you randomly select two parts from the box with replacement, what is the probability that both parts are defective? Now we have independent events because we are putting the part back into the box before we draw the second one. This means that the probability that I get a bad part is 3 out of 15. The likelihood that the second part is bad? You are correct. It is still 3 out of 15 because we put the first part back and the sample space was restored to 16 and again there were three bad parts in the box. 
multiplying those two probabilities together gives us a 9 out of 225 or 4 percent chance that if I replace the parts after each selection that I will end up with two bad parts. Just to summarize what you've learned when you are faced with a series of probability events you need to first determine if the events affect the outcome of one another. If they are dependent events both the sample size and the likelihood of success decrease with each successive event. If they are independent, the sample size and the likelihood of success remains fixed in each event. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on this fascinating topic of independent and dependent events. Have a great day.